Sound design. Yeah. So what do all these settings do in the impulse response module of Smart, and how do they affect your results? So for a recent article that I've been working on, I've been going back through the manual line by line to try to understand these settings a little bit more. So I thought I'd just share some of the things I've been learning with you. And if you know anything more about these settings that could help me, I'd love to know. So please comment below on this video. So in my test, I've been mainly using two types of stimulus, either the pseudo random pink noise with drop IR data window and, or the pink sweep. And I believe these are both considered period matched stimulus. And um, these seem to be the settings that uh, are stable, work the fastest, and give you the best dynamic range. So I've just been testing these two. Thing to remember about these two is that they operate a little bit differently. So if you're using pink noise, then you would start the generator, hit play on the measurement, it would finish, then you would stop the generator. If you're using pink sweep, and you have the triggered by impulse response setting there, then you can just hit play and it'll do the thing by itself. Now, if this is the first time you're doing it, you probably want to start the generator while you have your finger on the output fader of your console or whatever, because sometimes this uh, pink sweep can be pretty loud. Another reason why I want to look at these settings is because I've noticed that measuring a pink sweep in a room is one of the things that can really piss people off. So I try to do it when they're not there, but sometimes I just need to do it. And I've noticed that if I, I need to do, you know, multiple and I need to average them together. So I can't just do one of them. And for some reason, it's one of those stimulus that really bothers people to whereas uh, switching to something like uh, pink noise doesn't seem to bother people as much. So another reason why I want to look at these settings. So a thing that caught my eye in the manual is this line. In theory, averaging two IR measurements or doubling the FFT size used for a single IR measurement should improve signal to noise ratio of measurements by three dB. So from what I understand of that sentence, I can combine FFT size, number of averages, and signal generator level in the room in a creative fashion to get the dynamic range that I need. So right now you can see that I have a dynamic range of 65 dB on this measurement. And so potentially I could make this FFT size twice as long, go 128K. Um, let me set this back to zero. So I could make the FFT size twice as long and then potentially I could lower this by three dB and I could maintain the same dynamic range. I could also double the number of averages and again, lower this by three dB. Or I could go the other way. I could raise this uh, signal generator by three dB in the room, and then I could make all of this stuff smaller and make the whole thing take less long. So do you want faster measurements with a louder stimulus in the room and then it's over sooner? Or uh, do you want it quieter in the room so maybe it doesn't bother you or as many people, um, and, but the thing could be longer. Here's a comparison of FFT sizes. You can see that as I double the FFT size from 16 to 32 to 64, the dynamic range gets bigger and bigger. Same thing with the averages. As I change averages from zero to two to four, I get improved dynamic range. Now I tested the overlap and it didn't seem to help that much. So overlap is the setting over here under impulse response. Here's the overlap. And what it says in the manual is that you could potentially double the number of averages, but then set the overlap higher. And I assume this only works when you're using the um, pink noise pseudo random, but you could set this overlap to something higher like 50%. And then you still get some of the benefits of doubling the number of averages, but it doesn't take as long. And I tested that a little bit. And what I wanted to see, I'm not sure if this is the right way to test it, but I wanted to see if I could have exactly the same amount of time, but improve signal to noise ratio. So here is a measurement in yellow with zero averages, zero overlap. And then in blue is two averages with 99% overlap. So it takes almost the exact same amount of time. And I didn't really see much improvement. So I wouldn't worry about this one too much, but let me know if you know uh, some good settings for that. And the last setting that I'll mention is the delay. If you're using these P 
period match stimulus, then you don't need to worry about this. It could be zero or anything. And I misunderstood this for a while. And I used to think that you needed to take a measurement, then you know find the peak here, and then take the measurement again. And so I was effectively doubling all of the time that I needed in the field to get these. So just keep in mind if you're using these period match stimulus that you don't need any setting here and you can just skip that completely. So I guess just to wrap up for the article that I did, since I'm trying to find room modes and do a bunch of IR quickly, I knew that I needed a long enough FFT size, so I just left that there. Zero averages to make it fast. And then what I've decided to use moving forward is not the pink sweep setting, which seems to piss people off, but I'm gonna try using the pink noise setting more often. And um, that way also I can just leave it running all the time instead of turning it off and on, which also seems to kind of bother people. If you just leave it running, then people kind of get used to it. So I can turn that on, just leave it running, hit play, do a measurement, move the microphone, hit play, do a measurement, move the microphone, you know, and saving all the while in between. All right, so let me know what tips you guys have for settings in the impulse module. Thanks. Sound design. Yeah.